and so happy to be presenting Team United, also known as the Rosado Sisters, uh, who have been part of the Montreal family for over six years, uh, have raised thousands and thousands of dollars for us, uh, and we'll let you all know how they've done it, how they have started as such a small team to almost are in our top, top fundraising teams in Montreal. Uh, they are a team that has such a strong connection to the cause and is really, really involved in getting the community of uh, where they live involved uh, with the Leukemia Fund Society and not only their community, but also Light the Night. They are very big on spreading awareness and uh, reaching the stars to find a new cure. So without further ado, uh, the Rosado Sisters. Hi. Hi everyone. So my name is Tina Rosado and I have my sister here, Antoinette Rosado. Uh, we're really glad to be here to share our experience with you with the Light the Night. Um, so it all started in 2013. Um, our mom wasn't feeling too well and uh, she was hesitant. She didn't want to go to the hospital, but she had no choice. She had high fever, she had a bad cough and we had to take her in. And after three weeks of doing some tests, uh, she was diagnosed with an acute form of uh, leukemia. She was 72 years old and she wasn't given much time to live. One of the, uh, ty the type of leukemia that she had was very aggressive. So we never left her alone. All three sisters, we stayed with her. Um, my dad, we, we, she, didn't, she never slept alone at the hospital. She was in and out, infection after infection. It was just horrible to see her deteriorate like that. And uh, through it all, we, we just wanted to be with her, give her so much love, and we wanted to help her in any way we can. And she was offered a clinical trial. And that's when we first uh, discovered research and what it can do. And, and it didn't help our mom, unfortunately, but we said there, we have to get involved. We have to give back. We have to do something. Um, so our mom passed away five months after she was diagnosed. She died on Christmas Eve morning. And all the grandchildren, um, they think of her as our Christmas angel because uh, she was taken away on Christmas Eve morning. And it was so important for her, for all of us always to be united. And a few days before she passed on Christmas Eve morning, we told her, you know, mom, we want to take you home. We want to spend some time with you. We're going to pick you up on Christmas and you just come home for a little while. And she said, Tina, Antoinette, Lola, she said, I can't even walk. I can't come home. She goes, I did what I had to do with you girls. She goes, now it's time for you to take care of your family. She goes, and at Christmas, I want you to be with your family. And I, I really believe in my heart, that's why she left us on Christmas Eve because she wanted us to be with our children and our husband. And so she's our Christmas angel. And um, she passed, but her love, her support for us, her spirit is so strong. And it was actually my girls who thought, how can we create, how can we keep Nana's memory alive, you know? So they thought of doing a lemonade stand. So you could put the first slide, please. And we reached out to a few neighbors in the community. And I said, you know, my girls are putting together a lemonade stand. We want to raise some funds. We want to give back to um, this cause, the Society of Leukemia and Lymphoma. And that's when I met Alyssa Brandone. And she told me all about it. And she said, you know, Tina, every dollar counts. So we started small. We started with a lemonade stand. And those are my daughters, my son there. And the neighbors all came out. And on the first day, the first time we did this, in two short hours, we raised $200. And then um, the girls were so excited. They felt like they were giving back. Uh, we spoke about my mom throughout the whole two hours. Um, and my neighbors really appreciate it. Just, we make connections, you know? And then um, the next year we said, how could we add on? So. We're, we're from Italian culture and we love to bake. So one of our favorite recipes and my mom's favorite recipe was ricotta cookies. So we made big batches of ricotta cookies. And the second year we decided to sell lemonade and ricotta cookies. And that year we invited our family. So it went from neighbors to family and friends. And we raised $600 the second year. Then the third year, we said, okay, you know, what can we do now? So we reached out to some bakeries in our community. And it just so happened that one of our major sponsors, uh, La Fernet Patisserie in uh, Quebec, 
he, his father had just been diagnosed with leukemia. So he said, when I called him and I reached out to him, he said, Tina, whatever I can do for your fundraiser, I, I'll do whatever I can. So he ended up sponsoring 20 sponge cakes, uh, hundreds of cookies. That third year, we raised $1,600. So then we were getting bigger and bigger. And the fourth year, we added on a coffee sponsor. So we were selling macchiatos, espressos, cabe lattes, cappuccino, cookies. The next year, we added on pizza, sausage sandwiches, and we got sponsors. The year after that, okay, then we raised 3,000. Then the fifth year, we raised 7,000. And then the last two years, pre-pandemic, we had um we started a facebook page and we started an instagram account and that just brought us to another level we started making connections um as you could see throughout the years if you look at the pictures we we grew more and more we made more connections we inspired people to join our team so now it was just like uh, us three sisters but it was our first cousins it was our friends it was the bakeries that got involved our neighbors and now like our our team is growing and growing. And what I realized is that people want to get involved. People want to give back. And we're all going through um, the same experiences in one way or the other, whether it's a blood cancer or some other uh, disease. And uh, it just feels good. It's, it's all about connection. And I realized that if you don't try, if you don't ask, you don't know. And what's the worst thing that can happen? You get a no. And in most cases, you you do get a yes. So two years ago, we couldn't do the uh, bake sale because of the COVID and because of the pandemic and all the restrictions. So we said, what are we going to do this year? So, and that year was um, a year like no other because my my niece that was studying in law school she was on her way to become a lawyer one day she felt a lump on her neck and she's like um she told my sister that's next to me Antoinette she said mom you know I have a lump on my neck and she's like I don't know what this is and my sister said well we need to go get this checked and you know we just thought maybe it's an infection or something but you know after a series of tests she got diagnosed at 22 years old with lymphoma so we, you know, she said uh, to, to myself and, you know, her, her mom, she said, we have to do something. She said, we, even though I'm diagnosed this year, you guys can't give up. We need, and we can't do the bake sale. She goes, now I'm diagnosed. She goes, nonna, grandmother got diagnosed. So now we have to do something. So we said, okay. So we decided to do an online uh, virtual raffle. So all the sponsors that helped us with the bake sale, we reached out to them and we told them, you know, what happened with my niece. And they said, Tina, we're there for you guys. If we can't give you big goods for the big sale, we'll give you gift certificates and let's do this raffle. So we printed 500 tickets. We said, okay, $10 a ticket. We, we didn't know how it was going to go, but everybody messaged us on Instagram, Facebook, text messages, calling us. And after we sold 500 tickets, we had to order another 500 tickets. And last year we sold a thousand raffle tickets for the uh, fundraiser, the virtual online raffle. And we couldn't believe it. We really couldn't believe it. And now a year later, my niece is in remission. So she's a survivor. And we're so happy to share that with all of you. And we, we can't stop, we have to keep on going. And now this year, because of all the variants, we're too afraid to have everyone over and do the bake sale again. We're, we just started on Monday, we're launching the another raffle, our second annual raffle. This is my niece, as you can see, my beautiful Ariana that's in remission. And um, all thanks to research. And uh, we couldn't be so grateful. And we know that we can't stop, we have to give back. We have to raise awareness and uh, I think it's important we just share our experiences and people will will do what they have to do. I really believe in that. You have to be positive. And, and another thing that works with the team is we have a group chat. 
And we give each other updates every week. We'll send a quote to each other. We'll send a picture. We'll share a story with each other. So like I said, connection, positivity, uh, and remember your goals. Just everybody has to come together and remember the goals. So that's it from us. Thank you for having us on this webcast. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tina and Antoinette. Uh, truly inspiring. And thank you for letting, uh, sharing all your tips and your tricks with uh, all of Canada. Uh, I'm sure after this, everybody's going to start printing raffle tickets and going to the local bakeries asking for some donations. So thank you so much. And we're so happy to hear that Ariana is doing well and she's uh, in our hearts and uh, we're doing this for her and for everybody else. Thank you, Christine. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you.